Hi everyone, this is Caleb from the Digital Media Center. In this video, we're going to walk through the creation of a two-layer vinyl sticker from start to finish with the Cricut Maker. For this, we have a few main steps. The first two are absolutely critical for you to know, and the next few steps are important for you to know so that you can make your files correctly, and you don't get a vinyl sticker that comes out poorly. With that, these are the steps we're going to cover in this video. File prep, file submission, Cricut software use, cutting sticker layers, weeding a sticker, transferring and finishing a sticker. First, let's talk about file prep. As you can see here, I've gone into Adobe Illustrator and created a quick SVG representation of the flat irons here in Boulder. You can also submit documents from Rhino or any other program really, as long as they follow the correct file format. I will assume for the sake of this video that you generally know how to create your own image, but I'll give you a quick summary of the steps I used to create this image. First, I got an image of the flat irons from Google. A good tip here is that if you want to right click on the image and select open image in new tab, that will give you the highest quality. You can see the differences in quality here with the copied and pasted version versus the version that I actually opened the image before copying and pasting it. Next, we want to trace the light areas and shadow areas. We could use an image trace to do this, but this is such a complex image that it may actually be faster just to trace the general outline of the flat irons instead of trying to work with all the settings in Illustrator. Keep in mind, the vinyl cutter is good at fine detail, but it isn't magic. It can't accurately cut all these tiny details from a traced image very well without a lot of simplification first. Even if it could, that dramatically increases the time it takes to actually complete the cut of the vinyl cutter, and it will also make your weeding process, which we'll get to later, much more complex. Next, I traced the light portions and the dark portions separately, placed them on different layers, and traced a general outline of them together to make a strong border for the sticker. To fill in the dark areas, I used a rough tracing of the entire area I was interested in and placed it behind everything else. I set that to black fill with no stroke. From here, I copied that backing layer and used the offset path command along with a paint fill to make a white border around the whole area that was about one tenth of an inch thick. I also simplified my whole shape in order to make it easier to cut on a vinyl cutter. Now that I have my shape, I need to export it. Because this is a two layer sticker, we need two files. One file will be for the top layer and the second file will be for the bottom layer. One important note is that if you need to make a vinyl sticker that's some exact size, you should draw or scale it to that exact size before exporting it, or it will not be perfect when it's cut. Here I'll export the first layer as a PNG file, and I'll double check that the background is set to transparent, and that the scale is at one times. This is an important step. If you do not set your background to transparent, the vinyl cutter will likely not be able to tell the difference between the outline of your shape and the background of the image. I'll complete the same set of steps on the second layer as well, and both will be saved as PNG files. Now that we've prepared our file, we can submit the file on Papercut. If you have questions on how to do this, take a look at our print job submission video, and it should walk you through the steps. We have a link to our print submission site on the DMC page of the ENVD website. That's all the information you should absolutely know before submitting a vinyl cutter job. From here, we will explain the next few steps that will give you insight in how the whole process of vinyl cutting works at the DMC. When we receive your vinyl cut request, we can open your files in our software called Cricut Design Space. This allows us to set up all sorts of things for your file before we process it. First, I will open up the black layer of this file and I'm going to pull out the blank spaces that I don't need. I'll save that as a cut only layer, which means the vinyl cutter will not ask me to print out the designs on a piece of paper before cutting it, and it will not expect some special registration marks either. We will have a separate video on printed stickers later. I will save this as an asset and complete the same steps on the white background. I don't need to remove anything from this because we're going to set the black layer on top of the white layer. From here, I can add both assets to my design and get started with cutting. Now that I'm ready to cut the sticker, I can click Make It on Cricut Design Space. One step that I took earlier but didn't mention is that I set each layer to a specific color. This is a good way to separate cuts so that the vinyl cutter can cut all of the same color at once instead of having to manually separate out each color. On this Design Space page, it shows me a representation of my cutting mat to help me align my cuts. I will first put down my white layer, which needs to be just big enough to cover the space. Once I have stuck it down to the adhesive of my cutting mat, and I've selected the material I will be cutting with on Cricut Design Space, I can feed the sheet into the machine. From there, I can press the Cricut button, and the machine will take care of everything else for me. I'll complete the same set of steps with the black layer. Once both layers are cut, I can start the weeding process. 
Weeding is the term we use to describe the process of pulling away all the material we don't want and leaving the material that we do want. This can be a painstaking process, and sometimes if the vinyl cutter has an extremely small section that it's cut, it's almost impossible not to accidentally weed that out. After we've taken out everything we don't want from both layers, we can move on to transferring and finishing our sticker. To do this, we get a snipping of transfer paper, which is really just a clear adhesive film, and we push it onto our top layer. We'll use the squeegee to make sure we have as few bubbles as possible before transferring it to the background layer. In this case, I realized that my lighting was very poor and I couldn't really see the white background against the white backing well enough to place the top layer. So I moved to a different location with better light and completed that step. After this, you have a sticker that can be applied to anything you like. The vinyl at the DMC is considered removable vinyl, which means it shouldn't damage anything that you previously put it on should you wish to remove it at some point. This sums up our video on making a two-layer sticker. If you have questions or want to try your hand at making a vinyl sticker, feel free to contact us at the DMC with the contact information at the DMC page on the ENVD website. Thanks for watching.